Hello there everybody, Sam Strange here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to the model railway news, this time for July. First of all, I just want to kick off by saying how amazing this industry is for recovering so well from what has been such a, a terrible few months. And because of that amazing recovery, there's actually loads of news to share with you today. So strap yourselves in, lots of exciting updates, new products, new arrivals, you name it, we've got it this month. So let's get started as I often do with Hornby and the new stock at Hornby. Now this is going to be a bit of a shock, all right, because we've never had a news item like this. But there are some new terriers in stock. Yes, it happens quite often. However, it is kind of newsworthy this time because they're some of the more interesting liveries. So we've got the LSWR Green, which, as I'm sure you will agree, looking at the photo there, looks absolutely stunning. Very, very tempted to try that version. They've got the Southern Green as well, which looks equally smart. And possibly the most popular is the Improved Engine Green here, uh, one of which is the Centenary version in the classic packaging. What a fantastic livery that one is. And they are available now, which is great. Next up, of course, this is one that I have covered, is the Stevenson's Rocket. Uh, this is the non-centenary version that came into stock uh, this month. Sadly, they have all sold out, I think, unless you're very, very lucky. But if you want to see my review on the Rocket, do check out the link up there. And let's see if we can get Hornby to make some more, because loads of people missed out, and I'm sure they'd sell them if they did. So Hornby, make some more Rockets. I think it would go down well. They also have the centenary version of Smokey Joe as well. You see what I mean? There's so much new stuff come out this month. Uh, again, I've got a review of the new Smokey Joe, if you want to check that out. It's actually quite impressive. Uh, they've added quite a few extra nice details onto this. It's still not a super detailed model or anything but it's a lot better than the railroad smoky job for the same price which was quite impressive also on the engine shed blog there are loads of fascinating updates to the various models that hornby have announced first of all as you can see there's a section on the a2-2 and the a2-3 locos we have historical photos and information on the two classes there which is well worth a read if you're interested it tells you all about how the classes came to be so if you're going to buy one of the models and you want to know more about the prototypes check it out it's very useful there's also an extensive display of samples for the a2-2 look at all the different Different angles they're showing off here. It's a very, very extensive look at the progress of the model. And the blog also highlights some of the different variations, such as the two different cab designs. And it's just so interesting to look at this stuff, I think. They have some of the A2 3s on display as well, which are already looking very smart and quite different to the A2 2 with those smoke deflectors, of course. Absolutely fantastic to see that. Hornby have also announced a brand new product this month as well, which is pretty amazing. Specifically, it is a brand new third class passenger carriage for the Stevenson's Rocket, which is soon to be available, I think they said autumn 2020, for just £16.99. Now, this came just literally a few days after Rails of Sheffield announced their own 3D printed version of the very same model, but for £39.99, which is obviously more than twice the price. Now, unfortunately, Rails of Sheffield, needless to say, cancelled their model basically as soon as Hornby announced their, which is obviously quite a great shame. Rails have had quite a bad luck with Hornby and Rails product overlapping recently. At the end of the day though, Rocket is Hornby's product and in trying to produce an accessory for another manufacturer's product, which you can't deny is a bit of a strange thing to do, at least so soon after the release, Rails must have known that there was a chance Hornby were planning the same model. And in this case they were and the gamble didn't pay off, which is a little bit of a shame of course. There is, however, no doubt that Hornby's model was in the works long before Rails was. Uh, there's a bonus engine shed blog here, which actually shows the team measuring that carriage at the same time as they measured the actual rocket itself, which must have been done a long, long time ago, possibly we're talking years. And the fact that they're already showing off engineering samples of the model just proves that this can't have been a deliberately devious announcement that's been rushed through suddenly. This has obviously been in the works for a long, long time, so there's no foul play there, definitely not. Looking at the samples themselves though, besides the slightly negative overlapping side of the model, it looks fantastic. It's gonna be really nice to have some different carriages to run with your Stevenson's rocket, and those that are having trouble getting rocket to haul the coaches that it actually came with might really enjoy these because of course they're not covered so they might be even lighter so fantastic get your pre-orders in if you like i think they're only making a thousand but if there are any available for pre-order i'll put a link down in the description for you Next up then, a bit of an update from Backman, who have showed some brand new painted samples of their Class 20-3, which were announced back in January 2017. 
As you can see, those are looking incredibly impressive. A far cry indeed from my old sort of Lima slash Hornby version, which are very nice and inexpensive, but compared to the Backman version, they don't look like very much at all. So it's very interesting to see those progress. Also where Backman are concerned, many of the new models announced back in the May version of Model Railway News have now been released. Those are the 121 bubble car, which are pretty nice, brand new of course. The Class 24 slash 1, which I think I talked about last month, but there it is anyway. And also a post office sorting van, which I think has been around for a little while, but they look really impressive, don't they? Uh, very, very tempted to try one of those and quite a lot more. So if you're interested, check out Backman's website or check out your favourite retailer to see some of the other new stuff from Backman that is in stock. At this point in the year, I had really hoped to already have one of the Rails slash Dapple Terriers to review for you because they do look really impressive. But unfortunately, according to Rails of Sheffield website, they have advised that the remaining models are to be delayed yet again. There's not an awful lot of detail as to why, as you can see, but basically they say there was a defect found on the bodies of the Locos, meaning that they've had to be remanufactured, which is obviously a shame, you know, we're having to wait even longer. But at the end of the date, they've been delayed so much already the initial release date, the initial sort of estimated release date was Q4 2018. So at nearly two years late already, I don't think the extra month or so is going to be a big deal. They did say that they're expecting them to arrive at the end of July. So it's not an incredibly long while to wait, assuming they're on time this time. Hopefully they will be. But on top of the two year wait we've already had, I don't think it's going to make so much difference. It must be said though, props to Rails and to Dapol for actually holding the models back and not just releasing them as is. Other man manufacturers, lesser manufacturers, <coughs> might have just let the models go out in that state. But no, I mean, they stand behind their product. They're obviously very passionate about it. And the fact that they are spending the time and presumably the money too, to get them absolutely perfect must really be applauded. So I can't wait to see how they turn out. Fingers crossed they will have been worth the wait and I'm sure they will be. So hopefully an update on that pretty soon. Next up then, just a baby update from Oxford Rail who have posted a little bit of the progress of their upcoming pilchard wagon. As you can see here, it is the initial CAD images. They have stressed that these are not complete, but they do offer a really good idea of what the model is actually going to look like. They're also a bargain price at just 13 pounds, 13 pounds to say how many wheels are on that model. I mean, the wheels alone must account for most of that price. It's crazy. If you want to pick one of those up, just £13 from Hattons. I'll include an affiliate link in the description. Yeah, I think I'll go for it myself, actually. You could probably build quite a big rake of those at that price. So that's very good. Can't wait to see those come out. And hopefully we'll see some new models from Oxford Rail because uh, it's been a little while, hasn't it? So hopefully soon we'll see some of those. Next up, Dapol have announced a very exciting update for their upcoming Class 59 diesel project. More specifically, it is a clag smoke simulation on initial acceleration, which apparently has never been done before in double O gauge. Now, this is an optional extra. It costs around £30 more than the regular DCC version, so it's costing £186.96. That's the Hatton's price. I mean, to be honest, that's not bad, is it, to say that it's got DCC and a smoke generator fitted, so that should be very interesting. I should point out that it is for the DCC models only, so if you're buying a DCC-ready version, I don't think you'll have the option to have the smoke but either way very interesting hopefully it will look pretty cool when that is pulled off from Helgen then we've got a little update on their class 45 peak locomotives it's a hand decorated sample as you can see here and these are going to be available for just 143 pounds 65 at Hattons estimated arrival date is July to September this year whether that's actually going to be the case given the fact that we're only at hand painted sample stage at this point I'm not too sure but as you can see that's what it says on Hatton's website if it is a little bit later don't blame me I'm, I'm telling you it's probably going to be delayed a bit from that but no it looks fantastic to say that is hand painted that looks very very good indeed doesn't it so excited to see how they progress Next up then, another update from KR Models. I'm just so excited about this GT3. I personally follow this project quite closely, so that's why I'm always talking about it. However, they have posted another update. It's our first look at what the KR Models packaging will look like. And obviously, because this is the first KR Models loco or model to be produced, this is the first time we've seen the packaging. And look, it looks really, really smart, doesn't it, with the white box and that red trim? Yeah, that is fantastic. They also posted some of the artwork for their upcoming The Fell Diesel Locomotive, the BR Green and the BR Black liveries, as you can see, which both look equally smart. It sounds as though the Fell project is coming along really, really well, and so hopefully we'll be able to see some engineering samples of those quite soon. Very exciting stuff. 
Up next then, not the best announcement in the world, which is why I've kind of left it towards the end. Unfortunately, according to Wally's website, the largest exhibition in the industry has been cancelled for this year, but they are hopeful that it will go ahead as normal in 2021. Now, those of you that already have tickets for this year's show, apparently those tickets will still be valid for the 2021 show, so if you hold on to those, they will work fine. Alternatively, I think there is an email address listed on their website as well. It might have been on the press release. If you want a refund, I think that's an option as well. You just have to get in touch. Such a shame about Warley, but if it keeps people safe, then I suppose it is a good thing. So, unfortunately, no Warley to go to this year. Finally then, a little bit on the polls. The polls have now been disabled in the video, so you won't be able to access them up there anymore. But if you head over to my channel and click on the community tab, you still can take part in them. I do about one a week. The first one then is my review on the Britannia locomotive, which was very expensive, but incredibly well detailed. Mine didn't perform all that well, to be honest with you, but others have said that theirs do, so possibly there was a fault with mine. I'm not entirely sure. Either way, I asked you guys, what's the most you would pay, bearing in mind the typical retailer price of £180 for the model? Very few would actually pay that much, looking at the results here. Nearly 70% chose the lowest possible option of £140 or less, which is quite interesting. It really shows how little people are actually willing to pay for models these days, which is in stark contrast to the ever-increasing RRPs. Very interesting to learn that. Next up, I did a review of the Adams Radial Tank from Hornby, which means that I've now covered both models on the market, Hornby and Oxford Rail. So I posted a very simple question. Which one do you think is the best? And as you can see here, Hornby got 90% of the votes, with Oxford Rail only having 10%. Obviously, the mechanical defects and issues with the Oxford version seem to spoil it a little bit, because overall, the Oxford version had some really nice details that the Hornby didn't. I mean, the cab detail was just amazing. So again, quite an interesting result there. Finally then, I did a review quite recently of the reasonably, I suppose, inexpensive Mahano TGV set. It cost me £80, although the price on Amazon is a bit more now, it's kind of like £90. So I asked you guys, would you recommend the train set for £80 to £90? And almost 70% said that they would, and around 30% said that they wouldn't, which is fair enough. I think those that wouldn't are thinking about the issues I had. Mine did take quite a lot of work before it would run properly on my layout, which is probably why some people wouldn't recommend it. Either way, quite interesting. So keep up with the polls. If you want to have your opinion read out in the next video, the next news video, do take part in those polls. For now, though, thank you so much for watching. That is all of the news. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, let me know down in the comments if there was anything I didn't mention that you think I ought to have done. And you guys stay safe, and I'll see you next month or next video even for some more interesting stuff. So I'll see you very soon. Cheers, folks.